Joining us today, my name is Chris Lettner. I'm a sales rep with V Technologies, and I'll take you through uh, first a brief PowerPoint talking about uh, some of the benefits of shipping LTL through Starship, and then we'll jump into a demo with the uh, GP integration. Uh, Starship was traditionally always a uh, parcel package that uh, supported all the major parcel carriers and some regional carriers. About a decade ago, we started building out the platform to support freight and LTL carriers and that we've continued to enhance the software, adding modules uh, with each release. And uh, we have plans for the future for adding some additional LTL functionality as well. We'll get into that here in the uh, presentation. So the main idea with Starship is to keep all of your carriers together in a single platform. Uh, so with that, you have um, visibility to all of your shipping activity from one screen, a central, repository of data for all of your shipping activities. So both your parcel and freight carriers are together. You have a single process to train your staff on. Uh, you're not jumping from different platforms or different websites. You have everything harnessed together into one set of tools. And then you have visibility to that information from the front office and the back office. You'll have the exact same workflow for your users between parcel and freight mode. Starship offers you over 20 different LTL options and we're growing that list all the time. This gives you real-time access to your negotiated rates. So similar to what we do with UPS or FedEx, uh, Starship has the ability to tap into the carrier's web services, uh, retrieve those rates uh, directly from uh, their mailbox and display them on the screen. That eliminates the need for you to have to go to different websites or give the carrier a call or call your broker. Uh, we can also do away with uh, the traditional method of using pro numbers from a book of pros and capturing or scanning those into the system or waiting for the driver to come to assign a pro number. Um, many of the carrier web services now offer the ability to retrieve the pro number directly from their servers. That'll print out on all of your documents and then push back as the tracking information into GP. Uh, the web services uh, for most of the carriers also offer the option of doing electronic tendering and scheduling pickups. So you no longer have to call dispatch or visit the website to arrange the pickups. With our GP integration, we offer uh, the ability to tie in all of your product information with the relevant NMFC code and freight class. Uh, so uh, we can store that information inside of Starship's tables to display on the bill of lading how you wanna declare those items for the carrier. Um, we also have the ability to map that information from GP as well if you're capturing that in the item master or in GP's extender tables. Uh, with the real-time integration to the carrier web services, we have the ability to uh, pull down the carrier's generated uh, PDFs for the bill of lading, both the VIX and the straight format. Uh, some carriers also offer the option of emailing that, um, and you have package and pallet labels. Starship also has natively built-in uh, VIX and a straight bill of lading, a master bill of lading, a hazmat bill of lading, um, as well as package and pallet labels that you can then customize with your own uh, logos and branding, uh, add any reference fields. So if you're looking for the ability to more or less format the documents that you want uh, to print out, you may want to leverage what Starship can do with the documents that are built in. Uh, with the dashboard, that offers you access to reporting and analytics to gain a little more insight into your shipping activity so you can look at your freight spend, your costs, uh, see if you're potentially leaving any money on the table. We also have access to late deliveries reporting so you can have uh, Starship run background tracking on all of your freight and uh, give you any exception reports for uh, freight that's, if you're paying for expedited freight, it's not showing up on time, that'll be flagged on the, the uh, late deliveries report. You can then take that uh, pro number and file a claim with the carrier. Uh, with the ship via rules, we have the ability to automate the carrier rate shopping and service selection. So Starship can more or less do the thinking for the shipping clerk, take that decision out of their hands and enforce your business rules on how you wanna get it there. We can override the ship method that's coming out of GP and select the best carrier and service for you based on cost size, destination, any number of factors. Uh, with our plugins uh, and integration to many different uh, EDI and WMS applications, 
Uh, Starship can also streamline that process for doing that order fulfillment for your larger uh, trading partners. And uh, when you're preparing multiple pallets going to DCs, give you the breakdown of what the contents are within each package, which packages go on each pallet, and then be able to feed all that information uh, into an ASN so you can notify the customer in advance of it going out. Uh, we also offer email uh, shipping notifications, similar to the UPS or FedEx type shipments. Um, not all the LTL carriers offer that natively within their web services, so you can leverage the e-notify tool within Starship to do branded emails, um, and that'll hopefully cut down on the number of inquiries that you're receiving. Copies of the, any of the documents, so a bill of lading or a packing list, could be included as attachments as well with those ship notifications. Next slide here just uh, sh shows you a snapshot of some of the various uh, carrier options that we have available. Uh, we have uh, many of the popular, mostly used carriers in the United States, as well as some of the regional carriers, uh, some 3PL and uh, hosted options as well for automating carriers that we don't have direct integration to. As I mentioned, that list is expanding over time. What we have coming up next, uh, next release 18.1, we have a module coming out for Worldwide, Worldwide Express, a uh, commonly requested uh, 3PL. So we're working on building out that integration right now. That'll be available in the next Starship uh, version. Uh, coming uh, in a future release as part of that uh, Worldwide Express integration, we're also rolling in Unishippers, uh, which is another 3PL. So with that module, you'll have access to uh, two different uh, 3PL's rates as, a, as basically a two for one deal there. Uh, beyond that, we're also building modules for uh, New England Motor Freight, uh, which is a regional carrier in the Northeast. And in 2019, we're looking at building a module for Echo Logistics. VTech are always uh, interested in our customers' feedback on which carriers and features they're looking for in the software. Um, so we're actively tracking requests for enhancements with other 3PLs and other regional carriers for LTL. So if uh, you don't see some of the carriers that you're using currently, feel free to contact your account rep and we'll be sure to log your request. As I mentioned, the bill of lading is one uh, of the key benefits of automating the process, we're being able to reuse all of the GP order data, the item information to populate the paperwork so you can eliminate the need of having to hand key this information either into a website or having a crystal report or an Excel file that you have to input this information into. Starship will bring all of that uh, order data into the bill of lading, print it out in multiple formats. You have access to rate shopping, so you can do a side-by-side -side comparison of both the price and the transit time of all your different freight providers. And that's accessible in both the client and in the browser-based rate quote utility. Uh, Starship also gives you a rate API, so if you wanted to embed those rates further upstream in your shipping process, you could call that from uh, order entry, uh, from CRM, shopping carts, any number of places where you want to see uh, matrix of rates available. And I mentioned the email notification as well. Another great way that uh, we can help you kind of reduce the number of inbound calls that you're receiving into your call center. Of course, the information is available in GP, so any of the inquiry screens, if you look up the customer or the invoice, you'll be able to find all the tracking information there. Uh, this will uh, basically pull all the order information, all the shipping information together, send out email notifications similar to what you do for UPS or FedEx with access to any of the ERP data. So a customer PO, customer ID, any of the order information that you want to include in the body of the transaction. And then any branding that you want to include, you can have control over the, the logo, the colors, the formatting, and then can include um, links back to your site or your shopping cart. All right, with that, we're gonna jump out of the PowerPoint and quickly move over to the GP demo. So the workflow with uh, GP for parcel and freight is 
nearly identical. Uh, you have the freight mode here. You don't have to necessarily click on that. You're just going to enter in the document ID that you want to ship against. So your order, your invoice number, quote, whatever that unique sales transaction is that you want to ship. So you can scan that in off your pick sheet or type it in. There's also a lookup available and it'll bring in all that order information into Starship. One main difference with the freight shipments, um, everything is palletized. So you have the ability to uh, package things up two ways. Uh, we also have uh, packaging scenarios enabled. Uh, so we can define case packs or packaging logic for uh, each of our items. I have that turned on here. So based on previous um, experiences with shipping, Starship knows how to package up each of our goods here. So we've created these three containers here, and then we've put them onto our most commonly used skid. Uh, there's a packaging database here with all the different types of packaging, as well as your pallets and skids. So I just have my LTL preferences set up to automatically put all of my goods onto my first pallet. We can pack that out in a number of ways. We can add pallets or packages here, or for LTL type shipments, you can also do aggregate packaging. So if you don't really care about the contents of specific packages. Uh, you just want to reflect the fact that you're shipping all of these goods. You can put in the total quantity of boxes here, or you can also do that at the pallet level, total quantity. It's a quick and easy way of assembling the shipment there. You also have access to the shipping assistant. This is probably more commonly used in the LTL world where you're consolidating multiple shipments. So I can enable that as a preference to pop up automatically when I scan the first order, or I can select that here. And Starship will group any related orders going to the same site, or you have the manual lookup here where you can go in and pick any orders that you want to consolidate. We'll go ahead and deal with this first shipment. Once everything is packed up and ready to go, if I'm ready to process, I can just come up here and uh, do the normal functions of uh, F5 or ship and process, ship that out. I also have access to rate shopping. I can click on the dollar sign or come over here to the rate shop tab and that'll give me access to all of my carrier rates here. We're going to do a value translation on the carrier and service level. So we're gonna stick with the old dominion that came over from GP, but you can see there's potentially other uh, ways that we could get the product there that are cheaper or potentially faster. You can see everything here in one view from the cheapest down to the most expensive. You can also shop by the time and transit or alphabetically by the carrier. I have mine set up to just display the freight carriers. We could also take a look at freight versus parcel. Sometimes there's a sweet spot there between say a ground hundred weight or multi-weight shipments. UPS also has ground freight pricing. So um, to certain lanes, there may be uh, that sweet spot there where uh, it could potentially be cheaper going ground versus LTL. So you can choose that as a preference, what the weight threshold is, in w which instances do you want to see both the parcel and the LTL rate side by side. So we'll go ahead and keep the business with Old Dominion. When I'm ready to process, again, come up here into the toolbar. Any of the accessorials or special shipment options, these are exposed to mapping. And I'll show you just a little bit about how we can trigger that through the GP integration. You can select those here as well. Uh, tendering can be done electronically if you're using the carrier's web service. So I can go ahead and book this truck for tomorrow and I can give the carriers a window of time when they can come pick up the goods. That'll be factored into the pickup request. So our dock is available at noon and we close up at six. Tendering can be done here electronically or it can be done uh, as a daily pickup. So if you have a carrier that comes by every day, they send a truck no matter what, you can set that up as a preference by default or call for pickup, typically customer routed freight or 3PL type shipments. Um, or if you have um, a carrier that's not integrated directly into Starship, you just wanna record the shipment, uh, but you still have to contact the carrier to book that truck. We'll go ahead and do it electronically here. So I'll process this. And if the carrier has capacity to send out a truck, we'll go ahead and get back that confirmation, print out our documents, and then feed all that data back to GP so we have it there for customer service. 
cursor is going to come back over here waiting for input for us to move on to the next transaction. So we'll take a look back in GP at the results of that. So we're going to update the same main areas in GP that we do for parcel type shipments, uh, starting with the order header notes. Uh, this can be customized to have as much or as little detail here as you're looking for. We're going to put a header and a footer around our notes. So it's not going to wipe out anything that may already be there. If it's a partial shipment over time, then we'll continue to append this record with additional notes for each subsequent shipment. And I'll show you also in the interface how we can customize the note to have additional detail here. Uh, batch ID will be up updated, so that can nudge things along the workflow in GP, letting the front office know that this shipment has been sent out. It's got the freight, it's got your tracking. We can go ahead and turn that into an invoice. Uh, freight, if you choose to write that back, we'll go here to the freight field. And we can also update user-defined fields in GP as well. So I've just put a flag in here as well that uh, it's been shipped out. And I have uh, one of the user defines uh, set aside to capture my exposure on the freight. So uh, my cost on the freight here is the 15102. Uh, but you can see here with the markup, we're going to invoice the customer 17367. So you can do a little reconciliation after the fact, running a smart list, or if you have SQL reporting services in GP to do a cost analysis. Uh, tracking. So the pro number will come back over here. And then again, you have the one tracking number for LTL, uh, different from parcel where you have one on each container. If you do subsequent shipments over time, then that'll keep appending to this record for each shipment. You'll have a pro number for each record. So all that information's over there in GP. Of course, you have the email notification capabilities. We can go ahead and send out emails and then the information will be available in the dashboard as well. Uh, so you can take a look at the shipment record. You can do lookups here by any of the GP fields that you wanna search on. Uh, so your uh, document ID for your order, your invoice number, your customer's PO number, any of the address fields, customer ID, any of those can be easily searched on to find the record that you're looking for. Uh, you'll have a copy of the email here, access to the tracking information, and then some additional detail that you may not find in GP. So a uh, breakdown of uh, the container data here, how many pallets and packages there are, each of the products and quantities that were shipped out, breakdown of the freight charges, and then some additional information for how the uh, data was displayed on your bill of lading. There are also crystal reports natively built into the dashboard as well. So there are freight reports here that you can run over a historical basis or on a daily basis. Uh, there's also uh, the uh, <coughs> shipment charges where you can compare uh, your cost versus uh, the applied freight or what was written back uh, to the order or the invoice. Uh, so you can take a look at your profit loss margin uh, using the data in Starship as well. Uh, there's also that late deliveries report where you can enable the background tracking and look at any of the uh, packages or shipments that have not uh, turned up on time. Uh, the rate quote utility, uh, this is also where you can have uh, some functionality in the front office. Uh, so dashboards more for historical purposes. This is more on the front end when you want to calculate the freight uh, going out the door and you have the customer on the phone and you want to give them an estimate of what the freight could be. Uh, anyone in the front office has access to the um, the rate quote utility, and this would have access to both freight and parcels, uh, parcel rates, whichever carriers are licensed for. So that's your basic uh, LTL type shipment uh, automated with a LTL carrier. I'm going to take you under the hood now to take a look at uh, some of the uh, setup that's involved with the carrier how to get uh, Starship integrated into GP a little bit tighter for your LTL type shipments, and some of the things we do behind the scenes to help automate printing the bill of lading and uh, capturing that freight information. So first we're gonna take a look at the carrier setup. If you go into the carrier interface section of your setup menu, you'll have all the carriers that you see here. You can also get to that through the setup wizard. 
And we'll just open up one of our carriers here. So similar type of setup that you may be familiar with from UPS or FedEx, the post office, you have account credentials with the carrier. Those are gonna be entered in. If you're using one of our automated methods, then you have a username and password typically for the carrier's website. Those are your credentials that you use to access the service. So you can input that information here. That'll connect up to the carrier's API, giving you the ability to interact with them directly. Um, and then that'll eliminate the need for you to have to visit the website and manually key in any of the order data, uh, giving you that same sort of real-time two-way integration with GP. So once that's set up here, then you're online. There's no additional changes that you need to make to the carrier. Um, updates over time as we make enhancements to the carrier modules will be pushed out in version upgrades. But once you're connected here, it would behave the same way as your UPS or FedEx module where you're getting real-time updates as far as pricing, fuel surcharges, accessorials, all that information is pulled down dynamically from the carrier's web service. There's a couple other options that you have of setting up carriers as well. Um, if you have just the basic bill of lading module, you can set up a carrier for what we call manual processing. So from here, you go to maintain carriers. And we'll go ahead and open that Old Dominion option. So Old Dominion can be processed any number of ways. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, freight quotes, which is a 3PL that we can get to rates for. Uh, so you may be using them as a broker uh, where they're negotiating the rate for you. Um, as we start to add additional 3PLs, you'll see those options available here. So multiple carriers could be under a 3PLs umbrella. Uh, freight quote also has a service called Enterprise TMS that can be used to host rates. Uh, so that's another option we have available for setting up carriers rating and tendering automation if it's a carrier that we don't have direct integration to. Uh, Old Dominion, you can see we can connect directly to their web service. So that's my preferred method here of how we're going to interact with them. Manual processing would be set to basically be paper-based. Uh, Starship's gonna produce your bill of lading, print your labels, uh, but it's not going to look to an external API to grab a rate or tracking information. It's just going to process it within Starship. That maintain carrier option could also be used to set up carriers that uh, we may not already have in here. So let me show you one of my user defined carriers here. So this gives you the ability to create a carrier, custom carrier, call it whatever you want. Uh, you can also um, you know, put it in their SCAT code here, different service levels, and you define if it's a freight or parcel carrier. And by default, that's considered a manually processed one. So it's not gonna look outside of Starship to uh, process that shipment. We'll process one with uh, a manually processed carrier here in a sec. We're just gonna go ahead and take a look at some additional setup that you can do on the interface to help automate that. Um, Starship keeps item information in its tables regarding all of your GP packages. So you can map that stuff over dynamically in real time if you have things like the freight properties um, in your item master or in GP's extender tables, or we can maintain that here inside of Starship's database. So we're gonna match on the GP part number. And over here on the freight tab, we have all of the relevant data that would populate on the bill of lading. The NMFC code, subcode, description to fill out the bill of lading, freight class so it knows how to rate that shipment. And then we also have groups, which are something kind of unique to Starship where you can have a generic product category that's defined. Maybe you have multiple SKUs or part numbers that fall into that same general category. Rather than listing each and every part number on the bill of lading, you can come up with these groups and it's a way that you can consolidate multiple entries. So we'll just roll up all of those quantities of product that fall into that category, and it'll just be one entry on the bill of lading. So that's there if you need it. You can set that up as a preference for how you wanna print the information on the bill of lading. And you can do that over here under your preferences. And then you have freight preferences here. For your bill of lading, you can pick and choose how the items are classified the type of bill of lading that you want to produce, whether or not you want to allow the user to manually create a bill of lading without a sales transaction. 
And then how do you want to group those items on the bill of lading by the NMFC class, your GP part number, or by the group name? And then some additional uh, information here on how you, which description you want to use. Starship also has an algorithm to create a unique bill of lading number. So that's another way that we can kind of cross-reference the shipment um, in both the carrier tracking system in GP and in Starship. So uh, it's just a rolling number that we can assign. So if it's, let's say, a carrier that doesn't provide a pro number, you forget to scan that for one that's manually processed, um, or you just want to use that bill of lading number to upload into the carrier tracking system, that's another way that you can do lookups. You have that here as a preference. A shipping assistant, like I showed you for consolidating, you can turn that on, some preferences on how the information is organized. Packing preferences here, I have the packaging scenarios turned on, so it's going to use all of the um, package information that I have in the Starship tables on how to assemble the shipment, and then I also have a preference set to take all of my loose product and put that onto my default pallet. So that's how we saw it come in all packed up. And then you have some preferences here on how the information is displayed on the user interface. Getting into the GP integration itself, I'm gonna to go to setup and pick my GP interface. And we'll take a look at some of the mappings. So the idea with Starship is the more information that you're capturing from GP, the fewer clicks that you're going to have to perform on the user interface when you're actually preparing the shipment. So you want to try to capture as much information you, as you can about the customer, about the product within GP, and then bring that data over. So uh, one of the very uh, useful things that you can do here is set up um, properties about the customer address. So I'm going to get over here to shipment options in this tree view. This shows you all the different uh, areas in the software, and then each one of these tabs has all the fields that are exposed there. So any of those special services or accessorial charges um, that uh, you're often doing with extra charges from the carrier, um, a lot of times those things don't get flagged by the operator of the software, or you may not know that information about the uh, carrier's, <clears throat> or excuse me, the delivery address. So uh, we try to capture things in the customer card in GP and then flag them here. So a common one would be uh, the lift gate. Uh, when we're going to deliver, customer doesn't have a dock, you're going to have to pay some extra money to the carrier. If you don't flag that, you're going to pay also for the difference in price as well as an accessorial for them to have to actually uh, take care of that for you. So uh, any of those special services here can be pointed at GP and we can grab information off the customer card. So we can turn on a checkbox pretty easily uh, by pointing it at a field here. Uh, any of the internet fields are available, customer uh, item information. Um, so any of these fields here could be repurposed to easily flag um, the shipments that it requires, um, a lift gate or an inside delivery, white glove service, any of those special accessorials. So just wanted to point that out as a way that we can help automate that process so when you're doing an audit of the customer's address, try to flag all that information, pick a static field in GP, and then tell Starship to point there to pick up that information. On the right back, just wanted to point out, you have the freight and parcel notes here. Uh, so if you go into the freight shipments, you have all of the default information here that we give you out of the box, but you can easily add fields here. Any information that you wanna capture from Starship is available from the drop down here. You can also change the sequence of any of the default information. You can wipe out fields. You have control over each of the tags on each string. So just another way that you can easily uh, customize that. All right, so let's go ahead and process another shipment. This time we're gonna do one for one of our manual carriers. So a carrier that's uh, not integrated like a Old Dominion or YRC, SIA. Uh, we're just gonna process a shipment here with um, one of our 
generic freight carriers. So we'll go ahead and send that one out with ABC Truck and Company. And as you can see, it's set up for manual processing here. So we're not going to get tracking or freight information. Now this could be captured um, inside of Starship manually. So a lot of times you may have a book of pro numbers from the carrier. You can scan those in off of a barcode. You could also type that information in here manually. You can also capture the price. So maybe you have a flat price um, or you call a carrier and you get a price. You can add that pricing in here. And then Starship will apply any handling on top of that with any of the freight rules as well to mark up the freight according to how you want to charge the customer. So this is just our generic carrier here. We're going to go ahead and process this. We're going to record the shipment and we'll feed that back into GP, the same as we did for an automated carrier. Take a quick look at the results there. So again, we have our pro that we captured, bill of lading number that Starship automatically assigned, and the fact that we shipped this out with the ABC Trucking Company. Put in the freight there. Uh, Starship also has the ability to uh, push back um, information into the uh, address field, the ship method as well. So we can, uh, we had this go out as the best method. So picked uh, post office by default, and I switched that over to ABC. We can set up Starship to update this to the actual carrier that was used. With the address validation, we can also insert any of the information here for the actual address that was corrected. Our user-defined fields, put our pro there, confirmation, and the price. Real quick, we're going to take a look at a couple of documents here. And I'll show you how those can be customized. So Starship has the straight bill of lading and the VIX bill of lading. And then we can also get to all of the documents uh, that are specific to each of the carriers. So we'll open up our old Dominion one here. The main difference is with one that comes directly from the carrier's web service, you don't really have control over the formatting. It's going to upload the information and plug it into their format, and you basically get it back as is. The PDF just prints out. Uh, with the straight or VIX that are built into Starship, you have the ability to customize that so you can add whatever formatting changes you'd like. We'll take a quick look at that here. In your printing menu, you have uh, templates and Bring that up here so we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. So this is what the end result looks like here. And this is what's underneath that form. So you have a standard information here that we have out of the box. Uh, you can take any of that and repurpose it to free up some real estate on the page, add any fields or information that you'd like. You have these objects over on the left-hand side you can drag and drop onto the page. So logos or graphics that you'd like to add, you can draw on the page barcodes, uh, bands of text where you have fields that line up in columns, individual fields, and blocks of text. So any of the information here can easily be redirected. So you can see you have all of the various fields. If you see it on the screen, you can grab that data and place it someplace on the form. We're in the bill of lading entries here, uh, but you can see there's other categories of data. They're organized based on what you're looking for or you have a master list here at the bottom of every possible field. So plenty of uh, customization options available for your bill of lading and really any documents that are produced out of Starship. Once you get it set up the way you'd like, do a save as here. That'll uh, be another name that you can you know, save that under. If you want to customize that, save it for a particular customer, or certain product. Uh, you have preferences at the document level themselves where you can tie that in with uh, rules. So you can associate that here with a print condition to a specific entity, whether that be a product, country, customer, whatever the case may be. Uh, PDF backups, so you can save an archive of 
bills of lading outside of the Starship database. Those are available for anybody to take a look at in the folder and just navigate to that through Windows. Um, number of copies can be automatically produced. You can also pop up the preview if you want to inspect the form before the job is sent to the printer. All right, thanks to everyone for staying tuned. If you do have any questions, uh, feel free to type those into the question area of your GoToWebinar control panel. And we'll just pause here for a moment to see if we have any questions. Okay, we have a question from a customer asking, uh, we have a location in Canada. Do you have any LTL carriers that will deliver there? Yes, uh, for the most part, any of the LTL carriers, uh, national carriers will go into Canada. Um, if you have questions on specific carriers, we can send you a matrix um, that kind of breaks it down which carriers go where. Uh, but for the most part, you know, any, any place that, uh, that the carriers will service into Canada is available. <laughs> for customers that are based in Canada, um, we do support UPS and FedEx as well as the manual bill, bill of lading. Okay, we've got another question. We work with a number of logistics companies. How do we set those up in Starship? Okay, thanks for the question. Um, currently, we just have the single 3PL available in Starship, but you do have the ability to add uh, brokers or 3PLs into Starship here. Uh, so you can easily add a logistics company that you use. That'll print out their information on the bill of lading. You can also pick and choose between carriers here that you want to put under that 3PL's umbrella. Uh, that's you know part of an initiative uh, over the next uh, year or two where we're going to start to build out our support of uh, 3PL services. We have a couple on deck. Again, if you have uh, requests for any particular services that you're using, feel free to send those our way. Another question. I transfer pallets from store to store. Can I use this to transfer pallets from one store to another? Um, if you're talking about inventory transfers, site-to-site uh, -site transfers, Starship doesn't really connect into that information. It's uh, In GP, it's uh, basically sales order processing that we can get to an address. You could always put your uh, store address into, um, into uh, GP as a customer, and we can ship directly against the customer card. So if you don't obviously have a sales transaction for an internal uh, inventory transfer or site to site transfer, we can get to all of the customers here in GP. Uh, so as long as the record exists in GP, we can pull that out of there. Uh, Starship also has its own customer database. Uh, so you can import say like your CRM records or um, bring in a batch file, a spreadsheet of uh, address information that you wanna ship to. And you can add that information right in here, either on the fly or in a batch of records. We can import those in. So thanks for the question on that. Let's take a look at the next one. Is the palletization rule set up and can it be adjusted to add new product lines? Uh, there is a uh, rule that can be set up uh, for a package or pallet scenario per GP item in the database. Uh, there is not an automated way to uh, keep the two databases in sync. Um, so it's more of a manual process to add new records. Uh, there's an import routine here. Basically take a flat file or a spreadsheet and we can import that information in. And there's prompts uh, that will ask you what to do with uh, any duplicate records or any uh, updated information. So basically you can merge any of the new records and Starship will ignore any of the existing records. So as long as you keep the uh, file in the same format and same location, uh, you can periodically export any new products uh, to that folder. I know some people have uh, set up scripts to do that in SQL, and then uh, someone would be tasked to come into this menu here and uh, you know, execute the import. Uh, so you can bring all that information in here through the import routine. 
Uh, as far as Starship creating those records, there's some preferences in the system that uh, you can enable to have wrong place. Have Starship uh, basically create and update those records um, as you're shipping over time. Uh, so under the general preferences, um, you can say use line item information from the Starship database, save line item information in the Starship database, and automatically learn packaging scenarios for new inventory items. So as long as you have those three enabled there, uh, Starship will continue to update over time. It would prompt the user on the first time on you know, how to package things up, going through the normal process if it wasn't defined, um, and then it will remember that information for the next time. Um, on the shipping side, on um, packaging, uh, you want to have uh, this setting here enabled automatically pack items based on packaging scenarios. As long as that's enabled, you have those preferences set up and Starship will continue to learn uh, the new behavior, the new products over time, uh, continue to update its um, definitions of how to deal with your products, and uh, it'll continually update those. Thanks for the question on that. Hope that helped. Next question, is the freight cost captured? Where would the cost be stored on the sales order? Thanks for that question. Um, in GP, we're gonna capture it in two places. Um, so one out of the box, whatever the customer facing freight would be, uh, would typically go to the freight field that could include any kind of markup or handling fees that you wanna add. Uh, then we can also insert data into the user defined fields. So I just have one going here to the user defined field. My exposure on the shipment was $135, uh, but with the markup, uh, we're gonna invoice the customer for $155.25. Now, uh, <clears throat> these are built into the GP interface. We can easily map that data here. Uh, let me show you where you can do that. Uh, if you max out those fields as a lot of people will do, then Starship has a SQL extension, which can expand your options for reading and writing data to really any source, opens up GP's extender tables. Uh, we can push data to CRM, sales pad, really any uh, ODBC compliant uh, platform on the network. So in your write back setup, this is where we can set up that uh, user defined cost here. Under my custom fields, I have this the priority field updated here and we can get pretty granular on the freight. I just have my total cost there, but you can see there's multiple charges. Uh, so we can break down those charges by the total amounts um, at the list price, the contract price, or the applied price, um, and then any of the different values that make up the cost, uh, your accessorials, so all of your um, fees like um, lift gate or inside delivery residential uh, discounts, so we can show what your percentage is off of the the tariff or the list price, uh, total freight charges, miscellaneous charges, surcharges, so like your fuel surcharge. Uh, so we can give you an itemized list. All this stuff is in our database. We have um, SQL views that are exposed. If you want to query the data, uh, Starship can also give you a flat file each and every day or a log file that we can keep appending of all this information as well. So plenty of ways that we can serve up that data to you. Thanks for the question, hope that helps. And next question here, asking about adding Sam's Club. So uh, probably you know, two different ways um, you can do that if uh, Sam's Club is a trading partner. Um, so I think they're part of the Walmart group. Um, we can set up um, 128 labels for um, you know, any trading partners that you ship with, uh, produce, you know, uh, trading partner specific bills of lading, uh, packing lists, any documents that are needed. Um, if they are routing their own trucks to come and pick up the goods, you could also set up Sam's Club as a uh, carrier here. Uh, so any of the uh, services that you want to set up, you can easily come in here, add a carrier. I have just a Walmart trucks here, but you can easily add Sam's Club here, click on new, and you continue to fill out the information. That would become another carrier that you can use inside of Starship. Then you wanna set up uh, 
the value translation between GP and Starship. And I'll show you that quick here. Under the GP interface, we're gonna plug into all the ship methods, either at the order header or at the item level. And you just wanna define uh, your Sam's Club trucking company or ship method uh, to match up to the user defined carrier that you've created inside of Starship so you can trigger that appropriately. Over here under the carrier information, we're pointed to the ship method at the header or the line item level. And then you have your value translations here. So this would be a one time setup from when you added that ship method, added that carrier. Your values over here on the left hand side are everything that's coming from GP in blue. And then over here on the right, you have the drop down menu. And there's a one for one relationship between the carriers that uh, are coming out of GP and then whatever the target is inside a Starship that you would want to trigger. Okay, great. Thanks for the question. Hope that was useful. Doesn't look like we have any additional questions coming in, so I'll go ahead and pop up my info here. Uh, feel free to give me a call or email, uh, Chris Letner, extension 229, cslettner at vtechnologies.com. If you guys are on GP, chances are we've probably talked at some point. So feel free to drop me a line with any questions on LTL, or if you're interested in learning more about uh, how we can help you out specifically with that. I'd like to thank everyone for your time and attention today. Thanks and have a great day.